please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the 2018 physics questionnaire of the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or MEC scholarships for undergraduate students. The answer key and the original questions are linked in the description. Problem 2 of 1. An object of mass m is attached to a light spring with a force constant k and a natural length L sub o. The object is moving on a frictionless flat horizontal table with a uniform circular motion as shown in this figure. The center of the circle O is at the other end of the spring. During this motion, the length of the spring is extended by alpha L sub O, where alpha is greater than zero, from the natural length. Find the speed V of the object. We need to recall Hooke's law, which tells us how much force does the spring apply. It tells us that that force is proportional to the amount of displacement of the spring. In other words, the elongation or the compression of the spring. And the proportionality constant is k. And the negative here means that the direction of the force that the spring applies is opposite to the displacement. So if it's if x here, which is the displacement from the equilibrium length or natural length, if x here is positive, that means we have a stretching or elongation of the spring, then the force that the spring applies is towards compressing the spring. And if the x here is negative, in other words, we have a compression of the spring, then the force that the spring applies is towards elongating the spring. So that's what the negative sign here means. It means that the, that the force that the spring applies is opposite in direction to that of the displacement. The centripetal force is the force that keeps an object from straying away from its orbit. So it's the force that pulls an object towards the center when it is going on a uniform circular motion. So without the centripetal force, the object would just stray out of its orbit and just travel in a straight line. But because there are centripetal forces, the centripetal forces, or the centripetal force in this case, keeps that object within orbit. Here we have this as the centripetal force it is proportional to the mass of the object and the square of the speed of the object. So this is linear speed in meters per second. And it's inversely proportional to the distance from the center of the orbit. In the problem, we are given this orbit here. And we have this spring. And from one end of the spring to the other end of the spring, that would be our radius of motion. And let's just write down what we were given. We are given the mass of this object here. It says it's m. And the spring is light, so we don't have to consider the mass of the spring in this case. We are told that the spring constant is k. So that will, that will be in the consideration of how much force the spring is applying. And the equilibrium length or the natural length of the spring is L sub O. So when there is no force on the spring at equilibrium position, the length of this is just L sub O. So you can think of that as the radius when it's not moving. So it's not really a radius, it's just the, the length when nothing is moving. And we are also told that when this object is moving in uniform circular motion, the length of the spring is stretched by alpha times L sub O. In other words, the total length of the spring when it is in motion is L sub O, which is its original length, plus alpha times L sub O, which is the amount of elongation of the spring when it's moving in a uniform circular motion. And also, because that is the length of the spring, that is also the length of this radius from the center to the orbit. So that's why we write here r, which is the radius of the orbit, equals this length of the spring. Now at uniform circular motion, 
the centripetal force is equal to the force applied by the spring. What that means is that the source of this centripetal force is the spring. It's the spring that keeps this ball or this object from straying away from its orbit. And that's the only force available here. And that's why we have the force, the centripetal force, which is the force that's attracting it to the center, is equal to the amount of the force applied by the spring, which is pulling it to the center. Now we replace this with the expression of the general centripetal force, which is this. And here we, we use Hooke's law and we get this. Here, this expression here is the amount of elongation as given in the problem. And here, when we, when we try to rearrange this so that we have V on one side, we get this. And we are also told that R, here we, we got R to be this expression, so just replace this R with this bit. Then we factor out the L sub O, that's what we got here. And then we just get the square root of the whole thing. So here we get V. On this side, this is what we get. If you learned something new today, please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!